Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today. I'm Hillary Franz, your Commissioner of Public Lands, and I appreciate people's interest in this topic. In Washington, we love our forests from our rainy coastal forests to our cities and urban trees to our ponderosa pine forests on the east. We have clean air and water because of our forests. We have a strong economic opportunities in our forests. And as we've seen with COVID, more and more people going outdoors onto our public lands, enjoying the forest for not only their physical health, but also their mental and emotional health. And now more than ever before, our forests need us. As we all saw with this year, the severe wildfires are a major threat in many of our forests. But today I also wanna bring attention to the additional threats we are seeing in our forests. I'm excited today to unveil our 2020 statewide forest action plan, which sets a roadmap for addressing those threats, including in Western Washington. It is an entire state forest action plan. This statewide plan includes the work we're doing on our 20 year forest health strategic plan for Eastern Washington, which many of you have heard about, and adds in the unique forest health and protection priorities for Western Washington. These include focusing in the highest need areas to address drought, invasive species, development pressures, insects and disease, climate change, aquatic habitat, and urban forests. This forest action plan identifies 16 priority landscapes in Western Washington, spanning nearly 2 million acres, where we will deploy state and federal resources first to begin the work of improving forest resilience. In all, the 2020 Washington Forest Action Plan outlines more than 100 priority actions to protect forests across the state. Now, what does it mean for our state? This is the evergreen state, and it's our job to make sure it stays evergreen and that we show a commitment to our forests from all those threats. This plan means focused work on Western Washington forest health. Our forests in Western Washington are facing increasing threats and their restoration needs differ from those in Eastern Washington. We've seen increasing fires in the west side. In just the last two years, 40% of our fires now west of the Cascades. In these forests, we will also seek conservation opportunities as we see increasing pressure from conversion of those lands. We'll fight invasive species, study climate change and the drought effects we're seeing, and increase our fire suppression and prevention efforts to protect these landscapes. This plan also means expanding our urban forests. Our urban trees improve water and air quality. They support wildlife and can even improve the health of the people who live nearby. We will reinvigorate and modernize the Evergreen Communities Act and conduct a statewide inventory of urban and community forests. For our urban and community forests, we will provide technical assistance for tree plantings and underserved communities, communities that for too long have lacked access to tree canopy and parks and open space. DNR's Urban Forestry Program reformed its Community Forestry Assistance Grant Program to include a focus on equity, using the Environmental Health Disparities Mapping Tool to develop projects in highly impacted communities. This will help us target communities with the greatest need. This plan also means supporting family foresters and growing innovative, sustainable wood markets in rural communities. A majority of our forests that are privately owned are in small forest land ownership like the ones of my family. Many of our rural communities have struggled with high unemployment made worse by our current economic downturn. We also know that where working forests don't succeed, they are more likely to be converted for other purposes like development. And in the face of COVID where it is changing where we work and where we live, we see ever increasing pressures on our working forest lands. We will advance public-private partnerships to increase milling capacity, expand programs that conserve working forest land while also growing the local economy. This plan also means improved habitat for fish and wildlife. We know that we face a crisis here for our salmon and our orca populations and our forests are critical for their survival. Wildlife in Washington state is deeply tied to our cultures, our economy and our way of life. We will focus on the more than 250 forest dependent species of greatest need identified by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And we'll secure funding for shovel ready aquatic habitat projects under programs like the Family Forest Fish Passage Program, supporting our iconic salmon and orca populations and supporting our small forest landowners. This plan means protecting forests from urban growth pressures and other types of conversion. Our forests face development pressure like never before. 
We will support easements and community forests that conserve these landscapes for generations to come. Now, some of our priority actions in this forest action plan aren't new. They come from existing Department of Natural Resource plans, like our forest health strategy, our wildland fire protection strategy, and our recent plan for climate resilience throughout the state. They also align with existing regional strategies for improving things like fish and wildlife habitat, expanding recreation and ensuring water quality. This was deliberate. Our goal is to continue working in lockstep with numerous government, state, local and federal agencies, with nonprofits and industry partners to reach the goals we all have for healthy forests, healthy waterways and healthy communities for today and tomorrow. It takes us all working together to accomplish this work across entire landscapes, regardless of the jurisdiction, and across the entire state. First and foremost, I see this forest action plan as charting a unified vision for our forests across the state, but it's an also an important tool that when submitted to the federal government, helps qualify our state for forestry program dollars that we can invest in this vision. Many of you may remember the largest Land and Water Conservation Act was established by Congress this year, the largest ever in the United States history. This helps us take advantage of funding programs like that, as well as others. Since 2010, programs tied to past versions of this action plan have protected 62,000 acres of forest land at risk of conversion and development in Washington. We aim to continue that success and then some in the next 10 years. This plan is about being proactive and taking steps as one to ensure health and resilience for our kids and our grandkids, to make sure that we keep the evergreen state evergreen. Our responsibility is more pressing and more dying, dire than ever before. I wanna thank you for joining us today. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our state forester, George Geisler. George, thanks for being here and for your work that you and your team did on this plan. Thank you, Commissioner Franz. The commissioner is right. Our state's 22 million acres of forests face unprecedented threats. Uh, climate change and drought are both leading to tree die off and increasing our forest susceptibility to insect and disease damage. Invasive species are threatening our native plant communities and wildlife habitat. And in areas facing development pressures, our forest risks being converted and disappearing. And also we are all painfully aware of the increase in the severe wildfires endangering both our communities and damaging our forests and infrastructure on both sides of the Cascades. In the 2008 Farm Bill, Congress charged each state with developing a forest action plan by 2010 and updating it at least every decade. At the time, they had three national goals, to conserve and manage working forest landscapes, to protect forests from threats, and to enhance public benefits from trees and forests. The bottom line was we set a goal back 10 years ago that we wanted to better focus our efforts to utilize federal programs and fundings to meet these goals. Each state in the United States has to turn in a revision to that plan this year. And the 2020 revision is due to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service by the end of this year. We in DNR, uh, the teams have worked tirelessly to ensure that we met this deadline. And with this, it will help us to leverage federal dollars for the many programs that support our forests and our communities. Over the past decade, our state has received over $50 million through the USDA Forest Service's state and private forestry programs. So this is key to getting work done on the ground. Programs such as the Urban and Community Forestry Program, which is critical to providing technical assistance to communities related to the role of trees in stormwater management and human health, which the commissioner spoke of earlier. The Forest Stewardship Program that provides needed technical assistance to private forest landowners across the state, many of whom have less than 100 acres, but are key to our overall success. And then also there are programs such as the Volunteer Fire Assistance Program and State Fire Assistance Program, both of which aim to improve the capacity and capability of our rural and volunteer fire districts who protect their communities from wildfire, and then also play a huge role 
in helping DNR and the federal agencies suppress wildfires across the state. Other important forestry programs we can employ within the Forest Action Plan include the Forest Legacy Program and the Community Forest and Open Space Conservation Program. These two federal programs help acquire and protect forests from conversion. All of these are just a few examples of where the public and private and federal partnership comes together. As the commissioner said, this action plan does not replace any of DNR's current strategies for forest health, wildfire protection, or climate resilience. Rather, it incorporates them under one umbrella and broadens the goals for improving our forest across the state. Successful implementation of the Forest Action Plan will require collaboration with many partners and stakeholders, as well as adequate funding. Under this plan, DNR will build and strengthen our partnerships to help leverage the necessary time and resources to accomplish these goals and share lessons learned over time. Collectively, the priorities and goals identified in this plan enhance and protect ecosystem resilience, promote healthy and vibrant urban and rural communities, and strengthen the partnership required to address the pressing threats facing for us today. I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to all of the contributors who helped us to formulate the 2020 Forest Action Plan update. Now I will turn it over to Debbie Holland. Debbie is our Deputy Regional Forester here in Region 6 for the U.S. Forest Service to talk about the Forest Action Plan from the federal perspective. Debbie, thank you for being here. Thanks, George. Um, as George said, my name is Debbie Holland, and I am the Deputy Regional Forester for the U.S. Forest Service here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, covering both the states of Washington and Oregon. And I am really pleased to be here today with Commissioner Franz and leaders from the Department of Natural Resources and the Land Trust community to share with you the release of this 2020 State Forest Action Plan. The Forest Service is proud to have been part of the comprehensive and collaborative effort that it, that it took um, to develop this plan because it takes into consideration the interests and values of many of the stakeholders who use, manage, and treasure the forests in Washington. As has been noted already today, the State Forest Action Plans were initially required by the 2008 Farm Bill, which as George said, tasked state forestry agencies with assessing the conditions of trees and forests within their boundaries, regardless of ownership, and that's really been demonstrated by the state of Washington um, to work cross boundary and look at the condition of all the forests. With this update, the state plan provides a comprehensive plan that will be used by state, federal, and private partners for years to come. The state of Washington really is truly a leader in the country in capitalizing on the programs that the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Forest Service through our state and private forestry programs offer. Uh, over the last decade, more than $50 million, as George mentioned, has been invested um, to support the programs that are highlighted in the State Forest Action Plan. And I would just note that another demonstration of the state's leadership uh, is that George, I'm happy to report, Commissioner, I'm happy to report that the plan has been approved. So I received notice on Friday that the Deputy uh, Chief for the Forest Service signed off on the plan. So I'm happy to report that. I do want to note that the impacts from this year's wildfires only serve to amplify the great importance and the need for us to continue to work together and to firmly commit to work across boundaries. Um, in the large scale scans, landscapes to improve forest conditions and to lower risk to communities to help them become more resilient. The 2020 plan intentionally incorporates the work that has previously been completed. Um, and it really turns into a comprehensive, cohesive statewide roadmap that all land managers can use to identify priorities and target investments so that we're working um, to leverage our investments most efficiently. We're coordinating more closely than ever as state and federal partners and continuing to expand our capacity through shared stewardship opportunities. 
through this increased and better coordination and prioritization of our investments, we are successfully leveraging our resources, better engaging and including stakeholders, and accomplishing more work on the ground. The themes and principles of our signed shared stewardship strategy are embodied in the development of this plan. And would very much like to thank you, Commissioner Franz, for your dedication and your partnership. We look forward to working together with you, George, and our many other partners in using this plan to align our priorities, guide our work, and achieve more together on the federal estate, on the state lands, and on private lands in the state of Washington. So thank you for your effective and coordinated approach to sustaining the forests of Washington, and congratulations on the release of the State Forest Action Plan and its recent approval. Now I'd like to pass to Nick Norton, the Executive Director of the Washington Association of Land Trusts. Nick? Great, thank you, Debbie, so much. Um, again, as Debbie mentioned, my name is Nick Norton, the Executive Director of the Washington Association of Land Trusts, um, known as WALT uh, informally. And uh, a huge thanks to the commissioner and uh, the members of the department for the invitation. It's really great to be able to share a few thoughts today. Um, very briefly, Walt serves as the collective voice of 32 nonprofit land trust organizations in Washington uh, in support of the private land conservation movement. So really, in short, we work to ensure our farms, our forests, our parks, trails, and habitat provide for all of us uh, in perpetuity. So really delighted to have the opportunity to share a few brief thoughts today and had the opportunity to be a part of the forest action plan development process. Uh, we have such a strong working relationship with the department and it really is just another example of their ongoing efforts to engage a very broad spectrum of groups in order to make progress on the systemic threats faced by our state's iconic forest land. Um, I really wanna echo the sentiments expressed by all the previous speakers. This new iteration of the Forest Action Plan is not only you know, holistic and very strategic, but it really lays out a vision of, I think what's best described as an all lands, all hands approach. That's really deeply compelling to me personally and to all of our land trust members. Uh, the problems and risk we face cannot be met alone and require a willingness to work collaboratively at scale um, across local, state, federal, and private lands. Um, given our work as land trusts, we're particularly focused on helping reduce fragmentation and conversion in an effort to keep our forests as forests. Um, so we're really quite gratified actually to see that the results of DNR's outreach as part of the Forest Action Plan indicate, you know, members of the public also see this issue as increasingly top of mind. Um, Washington really has lost a staggering amount of productive ground over the last 15 to 20 years. Um, when we allow our important forest lands to become fragmented and disconnected, this has huge negative implications for our forest products economy, rural economic development, recreational access, and risk of wildfire in the wildland or urban interface. Um, fortunately, as the commissioner alluded earlier, we've had some recent good news on that front. Um, Congress recently passed permanent dedicated funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund as part of the Great American Outdoors Act. Uh, this is truly historic conservation victory that deserves to be celebrated for a while. Um, as a result of this legislation, the funding levels for both the Forest Legacy Program and the Community Forest and Open Space Program have the potential to increase substantially. This means that as a community, we have the opportunity to position Washington as a national leader in working to protect an actively managed forested land base, um, you know, which they're already, we're already doing a tremendous job, as Debbie alluded to. Um, and this forest action plan puts us on that path in many different ways, two of which I wanted to very briefly highlight today. Um, one, this plan calls for the continued engagement with stakeholders such as the Washington Association of Land Trusts and the Northwest Community Forest Coalition to support community forest development here in Washington. Uh, community forests provide the opportunity for local communities to have a direct stake in the ownership and management of important forest land, which can help address many of the fundamental threats that have actually been laid out here in the Forest Action Plan. Um, and we're also making progress right now on that front, uh, thanks to the work of external stakeholders and the department, as well as the Recreation and Conservation Office. There's actually been a community forest program developed here at the state level and submitted a $22 million capital budget request to support community forest projects in the next biennium here. As far as I know, this momentum and investment in the community forest model is really unique among Western states. And I think we'll do a lot to leverage some of the federal programs that are mentioned here in the Forest Action Plan. Um, 
Second, uh, this forest action plan proposes a revamping of their forest legacy program with the reestablishment of a technical advisory committee. I think we have a lot of our nonprofit land trusts who are ready to bring important projects to protect working la lands forward, but maybe lack the technical advice and support they need as a project developer and a first time applicant. So I think that commitment that they've shown here in the forest action plan really enhances our potential to leverage federal funding to support landscape scale protection of working forests for the public benefit. This is really important work and, and very much look forward to working with the department on those two fronts as well as in other, other spaces that are mentioned here in the action plan. Um, I focused a little bit more narrowly on issues of conversion, but there's really, as someone who's wearing the, the nonprofit stakeholder hat today, there's really a tremendous amount more in this vision that's laid forth for the nonprofit community of all sizes and locations across the state. You know, whether you're focusing on creating green jobs through restoration, supporting forest stewardship on private lands, building trails for your community, or creating safe, equitable public spaces, this plan reflects those voices and gives us all a roadmap for a better future for Washington's forests. So I, I really wanted to thank everyone for your time. Again, thank the commissioner and the department. And uh, I think alongside everyone else, uh, happy to answer any questions. So thank you.